anatomy of the rotator cuff muscles. Rotator cuff is a group of four muscles that lifts and rotate the arm at the shoulder area. The muscles originate at the scapula and inserts at the head of the humerus. Rotator cuff tear is a common source of shoulder pain and when the cuff is torn, the patient will complain of painful, weak shoulder. The patient will not be able to lift or rotate the arm with the same range of motion or strength as before the injury. The patient will have significant pain associated with motion of the shoulder and the pain is common at night and radiates to the arm. The cuff tear is usually diagnosed by clinical exam and the diagnosis is confirmed by an MRI. The treatment is usually done by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, by physiotherapy, by some injections, and by surgery. Surgery is done when the tear is traumatic, means it's caused by trauma, and when there is a failure of the conservative treatment. A complete cuff tear will not heal without surgery. So we suture the tendon back into its insertion in the humerus. We utilize the sutures or bone anchors and the operation can be done arthroscopically or open or by a combination and a mini incision. Some tears are greater than 5 cm in size and they involve multiple tendons. These massive tears usually occur in the elderly. Sometimes these muscles will have atrophy and fatty infiltration, and these are the patients that will have poor outcome. With smaller tears, surgical repairs are more successful. In traumatic tear, the sooner the repair, the better the outcome. The rotator cuff is a dynamic stabilizer by tensioning and contracting and by holding the humeral head tightly in the glenoid as the shoulder moves. And that's called concavity compression. There are four muscles, the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. If you look at the diagram of the brachial plexus, you will find that the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus get innervation from the suprascapular nerve, and here is the suprascapular nerve. The subscapularis will get innervation from the upper and lower subscapular nerve from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. The teres minor will get innervation from the axillary nerve, which comes from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. So two muscles will get innervation from the upper trunk, and two muscles will get innervation from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. These four muscles sometimes is called the sits, S-I-T-S. The medical students use that. So let's talk about the supraspinatus. Briefly, the origin is above the spine of the scapula and inserts superiorly at the tip of the greater tuberosity. What is the function? I think if you want to know the function of all the rotator cuff muscles, Look at their insertion. I'm going to repeat that again. If you know the function of the rotator cuff muscles, look at the insertion. Look at this model.
This is where the supraspinatus inserts. What do you think will happen when this supraspinatus contracts? It will lead to initiation of abduction of the arm. So when you test this muscle, you'll find when it is torn, you'll have weak abduction and you'll have drop arm test. How about the infraspinatus muscle? It arises below the spine of the scapula and inserts inferiorly and posteriorly on the greater tuberosity of the humerus. If you look at the model where this muscle is inserted, you will know that the function of this muscle is the primary external rotator of the humerus. So if this muscle is torn, you will get weak external rotation with the arm to the side. How about the teres minor? It originates from the middle half of the lateral border of the scapula and it inserts inferior to the infraspinatus. So what do you think the function will be? It will be external rotation of the humerus. And it is tested by weak horn blower sign, which is weakness of external rotation at 90 degree of abduction. How about the last one, the subscapularis? Next to it is the biceps tendon. So if the subscapularis ruptures, it goes medially. The biceps tendon will be dislocated or subluxed and goes medially also. The subscapularis originate from the subscapular fossa and insert into the lizard tuberosity of the humerus. The function, you can see it. It is internal rotation of the humerus. This is a muscle that inserts anterior or in front of the shoulder and it is an internal rotator of the shoulder. When this muscle ruptures, usually it happens acutely and it happens like an avulsion in a young patient with hyperabduction and external rotation. It can also happen postoperatively for failure of the repair after surgical procedure on the anterior shoulder area. Sometimes it's a tough diagnosis and if you miss that diagnosis, and the condition becomes a chronic tear, you probably need to do pectoralis major transfer. So how do you diagnose subscapularis tear? Two tests. Number one, the lift off test. It tests the upper subscapularis, which is the important part, and that's really an important test. The patient will be unable to hold the hand behind his or her back. The second test called belly press test, and it will test the lower subscapularis. The third test with subscapularis tear, excessive passive external rotation of the shoulder compared to the other shoulder. Tears of the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor constitute the majority of tears and is associated with some sort of impingement. It's usually degenerative. It occurs in older population. It can occur also with shoulder dislocation in a patient more than 40 years old. But it also can occur traumatic in younger patients. Thank you. I hope I was helpful.